Where's that treasure? Hey, what's up everybody? It's the Pirate Stacker coming at you today from the Maitland Coin Show. Uh, this is in Central Florida. I have no idea what to expect. It's supposed to be 30 plus vendors and uh, I'm just excited for a coin show. I got my red book with me. I got my loop. I'm ready to go do some damage. Let's see what we got. Very cool. Smile. Little pirates with me. Pretty awesome. Let's see what we've got. All right. So the Maitland Coin Show. That was legit. That was fun. No joke. I had a really good time. Let me tell you what was not great. I literally asked six different vendors if I could take photos or video and every single one said no. Which sucks because there was so much cool stuff at that little show. There was probably, I don't know, 25, 26 vendors. Uh, they, there was a lot of slabs, lots of numismatic. I'd say 90% numismatic, 10% bullion. Um, and in fact, it might even be 95 and 5%, to be honest. Uh, prices, not bad. Uh, they were selling generics. <clears throat> Most of the places were five bucks above spot on generics, uh, six and seven bucks above spot for like Britannia's and, uh, and Phillies, things like that. Uh, it looked like most American silver Eagles were 36, 38, uh, pretty spendy. Uh, the best deal on Raw Morgans was one guy was selling, if you bought 10 or more, 31 apiece. That was the best deal I found on that. Uh, there was Walking Liberties for 11 bucks a piece. That was pretty cool. But let me get into my situation. I went there. I had a few bucks. You know, I just sold that gold piece. I had like basically 900 bucks to play around with. Now, I'm trying to get my seated liberties and my capped bust slabs together because I'm trying to put those sets together. So I make a quick run around. I, there was actually two people that recognized my voice that watched my videos. That was kind of cool. An older gentleman and a younger guy. Uh, so that's always neat getting recognized. Uh, a bit of advice, don't take your wife and daughter to the coin show because they're ready to go in about 15 minutes and I would have stayed there for four hours. Literally, that would have been the way to go. I, as it was, I spent about an hour. I do a quick lap. At this point in my stacking career, my collecting, my stack collecting, uh, I'm looking for slab stuff. I'm putting enough money in. I'm looking for slab stuff. Why? Because it takes away the guesswork. I don't know if something's been cleaned or or, or this or that, it, how it will grade. I don't know those things. And that comes with time. I'm new. I'm new to this. So I don't know those things. And without that kind of certainty, I'm looking, if I'm going to spend two, three, five hundred bucks on a coin... I'd rather get it in a slab, already graded, no details. I know what I'm working with. Here's what happened. I was looking for a half dollar. I found an amazing half dollar seated Liberty. He was asking 650 bucks. It was a $900 PCGS slabbed half dollar. I should have pulled the trigger. Should have, didn't. Somebody else swooped in while I was being indecisive about it, trying to decide what to do, what to get. You know, really when I got into this, I was looking to get pieces that were better than $100 each slab. And that quickly became better than $200 each slab. And now it's like as high as I can get with without breaking my budget slabbed. <laughs> so this has grown. And it's gotten a little crazy. Now, once that piece was gone, there were several raw ones that I was interested in. Uh, there was an incredible 20 cent seated Liberty 20 cent piece, 4,500 bucks. 
had the CAC sticker on it. It was amazing. Clearly, that's not for me. So there was some beautiful stuff. I'm not looking for the raw stuff. I've got raw stuff that I intend to send in. Had I found stuff within my budget slabbed, I'd have bought that and I'd have traded out of the raw stuff that I've got. Here's the situation. There was an annex guy. Now, I didn't have this raw coin. This I had picked up from Oviedo Rare Coins and Collectibles. This is my $1 toner. Beautiful, beautiful. There was an annex representative that was there. I'm trying to make up my mind what to buy because a guy is selling a one ounce, I mean, a nice uh, $1 seated Liberty example for a good price. And I'm trying to decide, do I get it? Do I not? Do I get it? Do I not? Well, the annex guy was there. I didn't have this coin, but I had the pictures. <clears throat> My big concern is when you zoom in on it, in person, you don't tend to notice it. When you zoom in, there's some scratching by the date, some scratching in the field here. And then this toning is bonkers. It's blue and green. I showed the pictures to the Annex guy. He's not just a representative. He also grades coins. And he said, look, I can't tell you with any certainty. But if you put me on the spot right now, he said, the fact that you've got the scratching that he could see from the picture blowing it up, and the fact that it has a bluish greenish tone to the back, he said, I would lean towards that perhaps having been cleaned or a solution or something. I don't know if that's true or not. The details are smoking. It doesn't make a difference to me. I'm mailing it in. But that was enough for me to drop the money and buy this piece right here, which I love. So this is a Seated Liberty $1. I already have a dollar. However, this was a scenario of buying what was best. What was the best thing? And this was, <clears throat> value-wise, the value is there. I, I bought this coin, basically 500 bucks, and it's a $700 coin. I'm PCGS grade, $700 coin. Now, a lot of people are like, why are you spending all this money on numismatics? Why? You're not even a stacker. Well, let me tell you why. This is, again, 2022. And I just showed you guys this with the other dollar coin. But this right here, this is an 1872 straight, right? We come down the line here. We're going to go to EF40 because I'm right in between VF20 and EF40. Imagine that's an EF40. It's a $500 coin. It's, it's a 30 VF30. So it's basically 475 according to Red Book, last year's Red Book. But again, EF40, 500 bucks, right? This is the 2023 Red Book. Same scenario as I showed you on the other coin. 1872, we run it down, boom. EF40, $675. That coin went from being a $500 coin in 2022 to the 2023 Red Book of $675. That's $175. Guys, that's like a 25% increase in value in this coin in one year. That's huge. You're not going to get that kind of growth out of other coins. In fact, that's even more. It's like 30% increase. That's massive. And that's what's happening because two years ago, I used to see coins like this. I don't see them anymore. Now, let me hurry up because this video is going long. I snagged this guy, screaming deal, VF30. If you can't collect a CC or if you're not getting what you want, get a CC. Uh, this coin worth 385 on the PCGS. I picked this one up for 265. 265, $110 difference. I feel great about that. Beautiful coin, VF30. It's a lower mintage. It's a Carson City. And then I got this bad boy for 50 bucks. Nothing fancy, but again, it's worth 76 or 78. It's going in the stack. I'm thrilled with how things went. I wish I could have gotten more videos at the show today. I couldn't, 
But this is what I got. And the reason I'm getting them, guys, pricing, the pricing, the value on this stuff. Tell me a piece of silver that you bought. Tell me a 10-ounce bar that you bought last year that went up 35% in value in a year. One year's time. 35%. Tell me one. Let me know in the comments below because I'm truly curious. This is why I've jumped into slabs, guys. This is what we picked up. It's rocking. Maitland Coin Show. I recommend it. We'll see you all next time. Please like and subscribe. Pirate out. Arg. <laughs> hey, one last thing. Let me tell you something. Today equaled to 850 bucks spent on 1163 bucks worth of slabs. That's the slab pricing, right? No BS. I'm up 313 bucks today. It was a good day. Thanks for watching.